focus on hitting your goals in every area of your business. Remember, the universe rewards the bold. A leader has to take the risk. Welcome to Wealth on the Beach podcast. My name is Daniel Alonzo and I am your host. Today, uh, I've been looking forward, Tori, to this for a long, long time now. And you guys got to understand, we have one of the most incredible, fun, uh, exciting guests that we've ever had uh, so far. And uh, she was Miss Galaxy. Her name's Tori Wilson. Uh, she was Miss Galaxy. Uh, she is a Hall of Fame WWE uh, wrestler. I mean, how cool is that? I mean, we're, we got a wrestler. We got a real wrestler. She's going to teach us how to fight today, just so you know. It's going to be awesome. Uh, but, uh, and, 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 and as I know now, she's a super, super nice person and um, been studying a lot about her. And uh, I think today is going to be very insightful. Uh, you know, a lot of women in my business, a lot of women in my field. And I think that a lot of you are going to benefit from learning from the great Tori Wilson. Uh, so Tori, what's it like body slamming somebody? Oh, God, it's painful. It's painful on, on the receiving end and the giving end. <laughs> <laughs> and so you are a Hall of Famer, WWE wrestler. Tell us a little bit about that and, and you know, tell us the good and a little bit of the bad. Oh my gosh, where do I begin? Well, I, you know, I did not grow up watching wrestling or dreaming of that being my career one day. It was something that I kind of fell into and just grabbed the bull by the horns and took the opportunity and it snowballed very quick, quick for me. And then I fell in love with it. And it was a crazy nearly 10 year uh, career that ended with back surgery. And I just, um, I just, you know, the travel was really wore me down and I was just kind of ready to put that chapter behind me. But um, gosh, I saw, I'm from a very small town in Idaho, 2,500 people. All I wanted to do was see the world. Um, I loaded bags for an airline when I was in college. That's how bad I wanted to see the world. And so when I got into wrestling and went through all my passports and went to all these countries and saw every city, basically every small city and big city in the U.S., it was um, exhausting, but more than that, it was so thrilling to see the world. What, what an adventure though, you know? I think that's so cool because, I mean, you got to literally see the world. I mean, you can't ever take all those memories away. I mean, they're all there, good and bad, but they're yeah. all there and, and, and you, just, you can never take that away from you. So what a, what a cool adventure. I mean, I know that you were from Boise, Idaho, and, and I know your dad was a wrestler, is that right? Well, my dad, they brought him on into a storyline for a couple of months. Um, he was never a wrestler. Okay, all right, all right. But he got to be a part of the storyline, so. Oh, that's cool, that's cool. And so, now what, what did your parents do? I always ask people what their parents do. My mom has been a social worker for many years. Um, my dad was in retail, my stepdad was a probation officer. Um, just, you know, normal people. And my mom would watch me on wrestling and be, you know, like, who the heck is that woman that I see? Because that confident woman walking into the ring right now is not my daughter. And that's kind of one of the things it's, it's when people meet me, they, it's, it, they're perplexed by how I was a wrestler for so many years, because I'm not the first one to tell you I was ever this natural born performer. I'm not the person that is the loudest at the party that has all the jokes and the stories and you know, I don't command the audience. So for me to choose that career, career is a little perplexing once you get to know me a little bit. I mean, did, did your family kind of, I mean, family and friends that you grew up with, I mean, did they kind of freak on you a little bit? I mean, was it, was it weird? Did you, did you get any backlash or was it total support? No, total support. I, you know, my mom, like I, when I was 20, I think I was 23, I decided to move from Boise to LA to pursue an acting career of some type. Like I wanted to model and I did a lot of fitness competitions and I was 
I just got a little bit of guts, a little bit of courage because I had done a little bit of fitness modeling and gotten on a couple of fitness magazine covers and that's all the encouragement I needed. And then I thought, you know what? If I can do this, if I can do that, then why not just push it for the limit and go for the gusto? And that's kind of what I did and you know, I can't say that my parents were always like, you're born to be a star, you got everything in it, you know, you can shoot for the moon and make it. They weren't exactly like that, but they were kind of like, okay, well, this is what Tori wants to do, go for it. <laughs> That's good. And what about friends? I mean, did you have friends that were, because you know, the reason why I ask is, is because uh, in our business, I'm, I'm in the financial business and we recruit all the time. I mean, we're, we, we, I mean, my organization recruits 300 people a month. So I mean, we are always bringing in new people that, you know, they're trying something new. You know, some of them, they've never been in this type. They've never been in sales, some people. And so they get like so many people, like they get pushback from people that don't see you as that person. I mean, was there ever any friends that maybe it was oh, indifferent or? 100%, uh, not okay. just friends, but a lot of people. I, I was thinking about this the other day. Um, even when I started doing fitness competitions, I remember there being friends in my gym that I would either overhear or they told someone else like, well, how did Tori get that photo shoot? She's not very athletic. She's not as pretty as so-and-so just, you know, bashing. And I always, I always kind of used secretly like that because it gave me extra fuel to be like, oh, really? I'm going to really show you now. And um, so, but I understand that a lot of people, it kind of makes them scared. And we can, and, it, and there were times where I was like, God, maybe I, do, maybe I don't have what it takes, but at the same time, you want to shut those people down. And I did lose friends. I do remember people would stop talking to me that I thought were friends. And that's why, it, as hard as it is, sometimes as you move into a different chapter of life, not all those friends are gonna follow you or be happy for you or help you grow. And um, that's just, I guess that's a, a downside and an upside. <laughs> no, I, I think it's a total upside. I mean, I, I think that, I mean, come on. I mean, you know, a couple things that I heard that you said is you gotta be choosy with the people that you surround yourself with. And, and I think that those people maybe I feel the same way because I mean, I lost a lot of friends growing up in business and I've been in business for now 23 years and lost a lot of people that I thought were going to support me that didn't support me. They thought I was weird. They thought I was crazy. They thought I was doing something that was, you know, whatever. And so, but, it, but I was the same way, just like you, Tori, is I really felt like that. I used it as fuel. I was like, I'm going to show these people that what I'm doing is real and right and good. And I'm going to work harder than anybody to make sure that I, that I get the job done. And that's, that's kind of a little bit, do, do you kind of relate to that a little bit? 100%. I, I just, my experience has always been like what you're saying is um, people are fine as long as they're feeling good about themselves. If they're not confident and they're not doing okay, wherever they are in their life with themselves, when they see you doing what they might perceive as better than them, then it's just not going to work out for them or you. <laughs> so do you, do you, uh, do you recommend people going into that profession or like show business and, or maybe even wrestling? I mean, do you recommend that people go into that type of business? I, I, I recommend for people to go after whatever makes their heart pound, whatever makes you smile, what sounds exciting. If someone wants to be a wrestler, I have a lot of people all the time, they want, how do I become a wrestler? And I would never tell them not to become a wrestler, but I would also say in the lifespan of a wrestler, the career of a wrestler is very short and it's very hard on your body. So. I'm like a mother hen now telling everybody, take care of your body and make sure you save your money and you have like, you know, a plan. <laughs> so do you think that a lot of people in the wrestling business, because I'm in financial services, so do you think a lot of them don't take care of their money very well? Because I, I, I think you have, I think you, I mean, I, I could be wrong, but what I've read is you've done okay financially. So, um, but do you see a lot of people not? 
I've done okay financially, but I've also lost everything I've had twice. Okay. Oh, so wow. Oh, my God. It's been through divorce, through okay. uh, really poor choices. And okay. that goes along with the whole, you got to be careful who you surround yourself with. And if you're around, if I would have been married to someone such as yourself, it was tight. I might have been better off. <laughs> but I think that my secret to success is even after losing, even after thinking I was going to lose my house, even, even when I lost my car, I mean, I, I lost my car at one point. And even after that, I still brushed myself off and said, I am still going to be successful. And this is going to be part of my story. Um, but I think in general, a lot of athletes and entertainers um, do not watch their money. And we always think that it's just never going to end. And yeah. it's not going to be tomorrow. The, the, the good times will never end. That's the thought. You know, that's the last thought of the before the disaster. And, and, and look, I mean, that's why, I, I mean, all I'm talking, I mean, that's really what this podcast is about, is about creating financial independence. And, and again, getting through those stories, because I believe we learn a lot from our mistakes and it really is never a failure unless you quit, unless you totally give up and you're a fighter and you've always been a fighter and you just kept pushing, you kept going, trying to get creative and doing different things. And that's what I admire so much about you. And that's why I wanted to do this podcast with you so bad, because I really believe you, you bring so much fight and heart. And you give people an ability to say, hey, look, I don't care how down and out you are. You can always come back. So let's talk about money, okay? So tell us a money mistake. What's, what's one of your money mistakes? Oh, gosh. I, got, I have two major ones. Uh, the first one, while I was married, I was on the road traveling. I was married to a wrestler. He ended up losing his job. He was home all the time taking care of the finances. I, I, oh, I hate taking care of, I still take, hate taking care of the finances, but I, I've learned I need to watch and know what's going on. Uh, the biggest mistake ever is just completely trusting someone and saying, write my bills out for me, take care of it all. Because that happened and uh, I realized my ex-husband became addicted to pain pills and we were losing everything. We had rental properties, we had a business, uh, American Express called me, you owe us $30,000, where's it at? And this is in the middle of me uh, finding out <laughs> he, he was not being faithful. <laughs> so it okay. was kind of all falling apart at the same time. That was, and, and uh, it, I know it sounds a little crazy, but the number one thing would be to pay attention Right. to what's going on and a lot of times as women we just kind of want to give control over to the guy even if you know whoever is good with money but it's the dumbest thing we can do i i know it sounds crazy but it, well i mean even in my own life i mean with my wife i tell her i always bring her in the finances i always bring her a part of everything i give her all the passwords i give her all the information i'm always telling her like know your shit because if i die tomorrow right if i'm gone and you know bus runs me over out in the street you better know your shit you know you better know what's going on and i'm i would say that to every woman that's listening to this right now get a hold of your finances get a hold of the budget get a hold of all the passwords get a hold of everything know everything keep asking questions how much money are we saving are we budgeting? What is the budget? How much money's going in? How much money's going out? And what, what's our net worth? You know, what are we worth today? Um, what are in the retirement accounts? What are all the retirement accounts? I want to know all the accounts. Where are they? Because if I die, there's going to be accounts that the family's going to lose because they don't even know that they exist. And people right. have, you know, little accounts all over the place. So, so anyway, so what, what you're saying is, so so important because trust me Tori women a lot of women out there do exactly what you did and maybe today we're gonna 
you know, save some women from losing it all. Ladies, at least, don't, you know, don't. Yes. yes. And you know, I, on the flip side of that, God, I have two other story, things I want to share. Okay. So on the flip side <laughs> of that, um, after that, I, I, um, I, after I had back surgery, I, I decided I was going to retire from wrestling and I opened up a clothing store in Texas, in Houston. And my whole grand scheme was I'm going to open up all these stores, have like franchise. And I did not know anything about running a business. I'm not a good business owner. Like I would talk people out of clothes, basically. <laughs> not a good salesman. Um, but my boyfriend at the time, uh, I went in with him as a partner, but I, it was all my money. And he was not a businessman either. And it, was a, it became a nightmare. It became a nightmare and I, you know, it skyrocketed very fast. It did very well. And then at right around the three year mark, we started really tanking and we didn't have reserves. I had retired from wrestling. Everything that I had made from appearances, you know, everything was going into saving the business. And I was so, you know, attached that I just couldn't let go. And I, I don't know why this one story, every time I think about it, it tugs at my heart. I'll never forget. I was in my clothing store. I was, you know, in there all day long, every day, just trying to figure out what to do. And uh, I was late on my car payments. Guy walks in the front door and I, my heart, I, it still makes me cry. My heart just dropped and he's like I'm I'm looking for Tori Wilson and I said you're here for my car aren't you and to go from the huge amount of success I had and to have this magnificent beautiful clothing store um to knowing that my car is now gone and my credit is ruined and I just put everything into this and now I have nothing it was like the lowest of the low and uh, the lesson I learned there was that um, you definitely want to make sure you've got people around you that know what they're doing and be, be confident. Like, I'm, I know my shortcomings. So if I know my shortcomings, that means I need to be surrounded by people that can help me make up for those in some way. And uh, it's, it's not a victim mentality whatsoever. You have to learn what you're doing repeatedly that's creating these situations and and i think also you got to know your strengths you got to know what you're good at because a lot of people make that similar mistake as they go into something that they're not good at and you know maybe business at that moment for you because there was a lot of things going on and maybe it wasn't the right time or even just having somebody to say look delegate it right like you take care of something like because it was kind of like the blind leading the blind a little bit right and you're like trying this big adventure and then you're like wait a minute you don't know what you're doing and i don't know what i'm doing and this is not good you know so anyways i just want you to know you got a new friend here tori you can call me any time okay <laughs> any time free advice anytime you want okay i'm it's on the Thank table you. right there okay all right. Why are you single? Well, I have a boyfriend now. Okay. All right. Um, I was single for quite a long time, two and a half years. Uh, okay. Before then, it was, uh, it was relationship after relationship. I spent two and a half years, uh, wouldn't even go on a date. I was really finding myself, and it took me a long time, and I'm so grateful for those two and a half years, because when the guy came along that was deserving of my heart, um, I had real self-respect, and he was going to have to be something extra special to come into my life, and uh, that's, like, I tell all my friends, anytime I meet a single woman, I'm like, please, once you finally grasp how happy you can feel, without meeting someone there with you, it, it just, it's life changing. Well, that's, uh, th so, so what is, what are some of those things that you love about your new boyfriend? And uh, what, what kind of qualities did you find attractive? Well, I think the first one was that I, 
felt free to be who I am and didn't feel like I needed to try to be someone else just to impress that person because I was happy with my life and I was like, well, take it or leave it. And I, a lot of women, a lot of my friends, we just fall into that trap where we just want to be everything that that person wants. And it might work for a short term, but eventually what happens is it erodes our own self-confidence because we're not, we know that we're not being true to ourselves and we just kind of like, I've been there, done that. And uh, you're never going to be good enough for the other person and you're never going to be good enough for yourself. And um, he really just lets me be who I am. I don't know, let is probably not the right word, but, um, and you know, another thing that I've, I've really, that has set him apart from anyone I've ever dated before is that um, there's always been this underlying feeling of a guy wanting to help me like grow, but not too much. Like, I want to help you, but I want you to be dependent on me. So I'm not, I'm kind of going to help you, but I'm not going to help you learn how to grow those wings and become a great businesswoman. And my guy now is a very good businessman and has really helped me grow a business that I'm proud of. And uh, I 100% know without that guidance, it wouldn't have happened. He could have very easily said, here, you know, start this little business but he's helped me learn, made me learn, you know, even the things that I don't want to know really made me learn. And that's someone that really cares about you. Right. Well, I mean, he wants to see your best interest. He wants to see you blossom into what you always knew you could do, things that you always knew that you can do. Now he's trying to bring it out of you to become the best version that you could become. And and I think what's cool about it too, and I, I think it's important that that even women or men need to pay attention that, you know, you have to be receptive though. I think like I'm seeing in your eyes right now that you were excited that he was a successful business person and that he knew business and you were excited to learn. You were, ex am I right? I mean, you yeah. wanted to learn and you were receptive. You opened your heart to say, I'm going to learn, not, not like, because I think a lot of women are so independent and so strong willed. They're like, I don't want to take advice from him. I'll figure it out on my own. You know, I'll, they're so strong that they don't, I don't know if that makes any sense or not. No, it but. totally does. And I, I think a lot of pe women and men, it's like, you know, we want to think that we can do it all, but we're not all capable of all things. And that's the first thing, like, we all need to learn is just to let go of our ego because it does not serve us well. Every time I've held on to things so tight, businesses that were wilting so fast and held on, like, it never worked out well, right? And um, it's almost ridiculous that we would not take the advice of someone like yourself that knows what they're talking about. All right, let's talk health and fitness and how do we get healthy, man? You know, I'm telling you, like the biggest, the biggest thing I always hear is, well, it's easy for her or it's, you know, she's just like that. She likes fitness. I hate fitness. I, you know, she likes to work out and she likes to eat healthy. So that's why she looks so good. <laughs> what like what do you say to all those women because you know it's just excuses but what do you it say is, it, it's you know I don't I try to drown that out but what I do say to that is um gosh where do I begin <laughs> I've had hypothyroidism since I was 15 years old which is a low thyroid I take thyroid medication I had back surgery my back hurts me all the time I work out every single day and I didn't always love working out, but I love working out now because it, first and foremost, it keeps me happy and it really does help fight depression. I think everyone should, that should be the number one reason we all work out. Why, why do you think that is though? Why, why, why do you think it fights depression? Uh, you know, we release serotonin, um, the, the endorphins get going and just it, it, it's proven, you know, it's just, it's right. a fact. 
And most people, I don't, you know, especially when we're depressed, it's the last thing we want to do. But I, you know, even when I have those days where I just, yeah, it's just like, you know, we all have those days. But when I push myself to go work out, even if it's 30 minutes on the stairs, there's never a workout you ever regret. And I'm always like, wow, it's just amazing. It's like each time it still amazes me, our body, how it is. Um, I think, I think as you make progress too, you're, you're, you're getting happy. You know, maybe you see a little result or you see a little, you know, change in your body or whatever. I mean, I think that brings some happiness too, right? Totally. And what I've noticed with a lot of my clients though, is that everybody wants the quick fix and they want, if they can't, you know, three weeks ago, they started a new diet and work started working out. And if they can't look good at the beach in two weeks, they're going to quit. And also, uh, you know, my biggest thing that I always tell people is that I do not eat healthy all the time. I'm not one of those people that is like, has to eat vegan all the time and, and count my carbs and proteins and all that. I help people kind of realize what they're eating, but I am just like everybody else. I wake up in the morning, my boyfriend teases me. I wake up in the morning sometimes. And the first thing I might grab is a cookie. I'm just going to be real. I'm a health coach, but that's just the way it is. Sometimes I, you look in my pantry and I like to have five-year-old treats, but, but this key is I can have just a little bit and be happy with it because I don't deny myself it all the time. And most people, they think all or nothing. Shoot. I just had a piece of pizza. My diet's gone. I might as well just forget about trying to be healthy. And it, that, that's not life. We all mess up every day. Well, I, I completely agree with that because I mean, you're, you know, we're all human and, and I don't know for me too. I mean, not that I'm Mr. You know, health or Mr. Universe or anything like that, but I, but I really, I've always maintained my weight and my, my, my energy and the way I, you know, my body, you know, the way I want my body to look like, and I've always maintained that by, um, you know, I always tell people, moderation and everything, you know, I mean, if you go out, I mean, do you really have to have the double double, you know, or two double doubles, you know what I mean? Like, do you really have to eat double the amount of food? Like, instead of having five cookies, can you have maybe one or two? You know what I mean? Like, can you just think about the amount of stuff you're putting in your body? And I also believe, which I'm sure you do too, I'm always cleansing. I'm always making sure my body is clean you know and 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 i don't know i don't know how much you talk about that in, in what you teach but i just believe my body feels good all the time because it's kind of like i know this sounds weird but it's like we take out the trash every day and you know people are like 50 years old and they've never taken out the trash of their body you know they never taken out the trash in their body and so what do you think about that does that a, does that even make sense 100 percent. you know it's i i always i I think a lot of times people forget how good they can feel because when you, you're putting garbage in your body all the time, you just, we think that's how you're supposed to feel. You're tired all the time. We forget, you know, cleanses are great, but I personally am not a fan of them. I, um, I've done numerous. I, um, I'm miserable. I'm starving. I can only like three days is the max I've been able to do. And I've just decided a juice cleanse is not for me. A cleanse that has some foods involved in it is more my style. But, um, you know, when I was a teenager, I was anorexic and bulimic. And I've gone through a lot of stuff like that. So I also know my personality and I know what I will and will not do. And extreme restriction in any way to me is just kind of like a trigger. And it's not <laughs> my thing. Well, but what I mean... But, but what I mean, and, and let me clarify, what I mean is it's a part of my lifestyle. Like I, I like to drink green drinks and green drinks are a cleanse. You know, it'll cleanse you pretty right. okay. good. You're you know, talking about celery. Oh, oh no, 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 no. And, and, and I'm also not talking uh, of withholding either. Like I'm not fasting every day or I'm not, you know, whatever. Right. So I'm saying as a lifestyle, like I like kombucha. So I'll, I'll do the, 
you know, whatever, cayenne kombucha or whatever. And, and it kind of, it's, it just, it, I just feel like my body's always clean, you know? And, and I just, I feel like, but, but again, if I want to have the pizza pizza, I have the freaking pizza pizza. You know what I mean? It's not like, I don't stress out if I love ice cream. That's my deal. I love ice cream. I'm going to have ice cream if I feel like ice cream, you know, I'm not going to, you know, starve myself because, you know, whatever. So anyway, I don't know, just to clarify no, my, yeah, my I thinking. Agree. So. <laughs> but, you know, it's, I hear, when I hear you say that, it's funny because I, I feel like a lot of people, when they hear us say, if I feel like having ice cream, I'll have ice cream, immediately they shut off. They're like, I can't do that. That I, there's no way I could look like you. Like I, I have this w weird body that no one else has that has an extra slow of metabolism and I can never look how I want to look and feel how I want to feel if I eat like that. And it's just not true. We're, we're, nobody is a, just a crazy freak of nature and we have to start listening to our body. Our body will tell us if something disagrees with us. If we're tired all the time. We gotta like sit instead of ignoring it and drinking more coffee. We gotta sit. We gotta figure it out. And and, and so is that is that kind of like the ch most of the challenges that like what are some of the like the number one challenges that you see people are having when they come in and they ask for advice from you? What what are some of the big pieces of advice you can? Uh, the number one challenge is that people are not consistent. And if you're consistent, that's when you start seeing results. And you're never, the quick fix, if it comes off quick, it's gonna come right back on quick. And the, I'm not a big fan of intermittent fasting when you're cutting all your carbs, when you're doing anything extreme that you can't have tons of energy with for, and, and live that way for your life, it's crazy to do that because you're just gonna keep going like this. You have to find balance and it can't be, you just wake up, a lot, a, most of us, we wake up one day, look in the mirror and we're like, oh my God, what just happened? How did this 30 pounds come on? And we freak out and we just go like 100 miles an hour, working out two hours a day, you know, and then what happens? Once you fall off the wagon, it's done. And then that's what, that's what happens to most people, I would say. 60% of people that start a, a program, that's what happens. Wow. And, and that's, by the way, that's with anything. And, and everybody, I just want you to know that I am here with a Hall of Famer, WWE stud at of the world, Tori Wilson. And uh, she's on the pod, on the Wealth on the Beach podcast with us today. And we're talking fitness, we're talking life, we're talking relationships. And uh, this is really, really fun. You know, you you you've been in a you've been in a magazine before, um, and that was a lot of years ago, I'm sure. A few, which one? A, a, a few years ago, and you probably know the one I'm talking about. But yeah. uh, if you're comfortable about talking about it, I, I want to know, right. like, what are your thoughts about that? I mean, you know, t tell me about that experience and what's your thoughts and. How do you feel about it looking back, you know, all those years? How does it, how does, how do you think about it? Um, you know, gosh, it was, uh, for me at the time, I would it, like being on the cover of Playboy was a huge honor. And to be on the cover as a celebrity, as a wrestler, um, to me, it was like the epitome of, wow, like this feels like it, right? Um, and to be able to go to all those parties when the mansion was popping, it was, you know, crazy. When they asked me to do it, I, to be quite honest with you, I'm oddly enough, kind of prudish and my mother is very prude. And I was so excited about the thought of being on the cover of Playboy that I never really thought about like even the shoot. I never went that far. I was just like, Oh my God. And, uh, I remember touching down in LA to the shoot and I, I just got the chills and I was like, Oh my God, like I'm going to be naked in front of a bunch of people at a photo shoot. <laughs> no, uh, but there was, you know, a few people and I was constantly grabbing the robe. Uh, I can't say that I'm just this free spirit. There was, you know, I wish I was more like that. I don't regret anything I've done in my life. 
it, uh, it is what it is. Uh, the only times that I have regretted it was when I felt like I was being judged, especially from other women, for having done that. Why, why do you think I own it? Yeah, you own it now. But you know, I mean, isn't it crazy, though, that I mean, a lot of other women are nasty to other women. It's crazy. Like, you know, I mean, do you notice that? Like, why? Why do women have to be so nasty about other women? Like, why do you got to be mean? You know, there's if the, a, a pretty woman walks through the door, you should, you know, be happy for her that, you know, she takes care of herself. She looks good. She Right. I mean, do you agree with I mean, well, obviously I agree. you would agree I with agree. that, but, uh, but you know, I also feel like, um, there are so many more amazing women and yeah. sometimes, sometimes we get that vibe, especially when we're kind of, when our looks are the first thing that people notice. Um, sometimes women, when their looks are kind of what they're all about, they're not so kind. They're not always kind. And unfortunately, then what happens is people get nasty whenever they see another pretty woman. And that's just not fair. That's just, you know. And I, you know, I was on the uh, airplane flying home today and I started thinking about how, you know, when we're young or at any age and people start kind of applauding us for what they picture us to be our top qualities we kind of start forming ourselves based on what we're getting claps for. And I definitely know that's what happened to me. As a child, I was anorexic and bulimic and it was all about my looks. And then when I got hired by the WWE, I was like the sexy cover girl, sex pot, blonde hair, you know. And I never felt comfortable with that because I never felt that was who I really was, but I was getting applauded for it. I was getting offered to do Playboy and all of these things and being successful. But at the same time, I was like, that's just not what I'm all about. And I think right. we all need to step back and be a, a little more um, understanding that just because what we might see on Instagram or whatever, someone's appearance, that's not what they're all about. And if we just let them, give them an opportunity to show us a little bit more. What do you think you're like really great at? You know, what's, what's another one of your assets? You know, I would say my biggest asset is that I'm really empathic. And so I'm super sensitive and I pick up on people's emotions a lot. And um, I've just started learning how to deal with that because uh, my whole life I would pick up on people's emotions and not understand why all of a sudden I felt really sad when someone in the room was really sad and I was feeling it. And so I, um, a blessing and a curse is that I understand people's struggles more than they think because I, Oddly enough, I can feel people's pain. And so where it's tripped me up is that being in relationship with someone that might be a narcissist or not on the same page as me, I would feel their pain as they were hurting me. So I would continue to feel sorry for them while they were mistreating me. Um, but I think my biggest thing, is I think that's why I love fitness and how, why I've really um, targeted women over 40 because I feel that I feel I feel there a lot of lack of confidence and sadness and kind of like just wanting to give up and I want them to reclaim that <laughs> I'm gonna start crying <laughs> <laughs> Well, and you do talk a lot about confidence, you know, and so there's a lot of women right now, they're in business and they're getting, you know, they're getting their butts kicked right now, you know, and, and, and I just, and that's why I so wanted you to come on because I knew that if they can hear from somebody like you that has been through all the shit you've been through and, you know, good times, bad times, but then at the end of the day to say, man, I'm, 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 I'm a powerful incredible woman and and I deserve great things in my life too and so I want I wanted them to hear you and hear your strength and so give us you know as we kind of wrap wrap up a little bit um, you know give them a couple of feel you know just thoughts of hope and how they can bring back that confidence in their life 
and uh, and take charge of of their life again because maybe they kind of lost a little bit of that along the way. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, um, gosh. I, I first want to say that, you know, I, especially on social media, I put out, I try to put out a lot of positivity. Um, but the realness of it is, is that we all have our dark moments. We all wake up the same way. We all put on our shoes the same way. And I still have those days where I'm like, wow, like, I'm a loser. What am I doing? Like, you know, they don't like me. That, like, I'm doing everything wrong. And ev the anxiousness comes across, and it's just you feel frozen. We all have those days. Even when we are powerful and we know we're a badass boss, um, we're still going to have those weak moments. And it's important to just acknowledge them and push them away. Um, I feel like feeling confident is the most important asset that we can have for ourselves and it all uh it comes from the inside but it helps when we like what we look like and when we feel healthy and um when we just give ourselves a little bit of time each day and a lot of women just don't do that and it's not fair we have one life and then it's gone and the people around you will benefit just as much as you by taking care of yourself I believe that. And I believe as well as women in business, um, you know, we, in our business, we build teams and we have agents. I mean, I have 1500 licensed agents and, you know, all through the years, I, I wanted to look good. I wanted to take care of myself, you know, as much as I could. I mean, I never became a bodybuilder or anything, but, but I always wanted to take care of my health and my energy. I wanted to be able to get up on stage and rock it. I wanted to be able to inspire people. I wanted to be able to, to you know, push people to become the better version of themselves. And I think that people sometimes forget that that's just, in, just as important sometimes as going and writing a sale or going and recruiting somebody is that you have to take time every day to eat a little bit better, to, to work out a little bit. And I'm not, I don't, I don't, I'm not a gym guy. I'm not like gym rat, but I do my little routine. Even at the house, I do my little routine every day. I you know, do my push-ups, my sit-ups, my pull-ups and my little things that I do because it's taking care of me. And I need to look good if I want other people to follow me. And that was my point is that if you want other people to follow you, you gotta, you gotta start feeling great. And again, when you, when you look good, you feel good. And, and I think that's what brings out some of the confidence. Do you agree with that? 100%. And that confidence I tell people all the time affects everything around you in business, relationships, friendships, you take, you take less shit from people for lack of a better word, when you feel more confident. Awesome. Okay. Last couple questions. Do you have a favorite comedian? There's so many good ones. Ben Stiller. All right. He's a good one. Favorite food? Oh, gosh. Another good one. Your French cheap fries. food? French, French fries. fries. All right. Favorite book? How about a book, man? One of the books that inspired the you. The Four Agreements. The Four Agreements? Everyone should read that book. It should be a must. All right. Good, good, good. Um, do you have any, like, do you have a favorite place to hang out? Is there, like, Maybe a favorite dinner spot? Because I know you're in LA, right? Do you live in LA? I'm in Orlando. Oh, you're in o Orlando. Oh, I'm sorry. I, for whatever reason, I thought you were out I'm this way. I'm in LA. I'm, I'm in okay. working as a group leader. So. Gotcha, gotcha. Do, do you have any favorite restaurants or anything like that? My LA family. or Orlando? Your are uh, <laughs> I love Katana in LA. Katana. Okay. All right. We're going to have to check that out. I've never been there before. So, hey, Tori, this has been absolutely exhilarating for me. Um, what a pleasure to meet you. You're a really, really special person. And I'm lucky that I got to meet you and got to Thank have you. this interview. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate your time. Um, tell us how, because, you know, a lot, of, a lot of women right now, they're like, I want to know what Tori knows they're going to try to reach you. They're going to try to contact you. They're going to try to Instagram you. How do we get a hold of you? Tell us. Well, I'm on Instagram, Tori Wilson, T O R R I E. Uh, I'm on Facebook and Twitter, Tori11. 
And then on the internet, fittensity.com, Fittensity are, they're my workout programs. And in there, I, um, I also have some private Facebooks, one for women over 40, and then for my guys and girls. And that's where I, you know, get a little more personal with everybody, but those are my main. So we could, so, so really there are women out there right now, they can connect with you right? Join one of your programs or whatever, and they can get a little more intimate with you and get to know you a little bit better and, and, and learn all the things that you've learned all through the years. Is that right? 100%. And it's, you know, the biggest thing is being around other women that want to see you succeed just as much as you do. And that's what I'm all about. Positivity. Um, there's no hating going on here. So you're building really a community of women that are trying to push each other up and what, what a cool thing, you know? And uh, well, hey, look, I, I just wanna make sure that everybody uh, listening right now, share this podcast, go follow Tori in everything that she's doing, get hooked up with one of her programs. Uh, and I just wanna remind everybody, we're still signing people up every single day for our Wealth on the Beach Club. It's one full hour with Daniel Alonzo every single week. Uh, and, and uh, lessons and Q&A, as you guys know. Um, and of course, check out alonzoacademy.com for all the details, lots and lots of free content on the YouTube channel. As always, dream bigger than ever, but make sure that you do it now. God bless you, we'll see you at the top. <laughs>